Hey, Scott, how's it going? Good, Neil. How are you? Oh, good, good. This week we're playing uh, Enter the Young, Scenario S51, I believe. Yeah, um, one of the starter kit scenarios that we're playing through to work up the full ASL. One thing to note on this scenario is the north indicator is actually flipped on the scenario card. It's wrong. It should be flipped the other way when you actually play the scenario. Um, <clears throat> And I can't recall how we picked this scenario. It just seemed, uh, I guess, one that looked interesting and took us out of the slot, the starter kit one scenarios a little bit because this is in the expansion kit. Yeah, I think, I know it was my turn to pick sides because, uh, but I don't remember. I think it was just a combination of the two of us. Yeah. Came up Th on this. And this takes place just inside the german belgian border the americans are pushing towards berlin they're about 370 miles west of berlin at this point and this is mostly a infantry scenario most of the early ones are or the starter yeah, the starter kit ones are. yeah simple for us as we get back into the rules so here we are at the beginning you're playing the americans um as the attack around playing the germans as the defender. Yeah, I'm trying to get a little end run on you here. <laughs> yeah, obviously I had to set up to cover both both victory condition buildings, one in the upper right and one in the, the, lo the lower end, which would be the west end. So I had to kind of spread my guys out. And I spread them out to avoid the pre-game bombardment in the blue and red zones, which I found in this scenario. I thought it would be interesting, but when I set up for it, I said, oh, I could just completely negate that, and it didn't really have an effect on me. Yeah, I think that needs to be, be kind of rethought. Yeah, some change in the setup somehow to, or expansion of those, those red and blue zones to have it have an effect. But here you are, you're pushing pretty aggressively south, you know, and my guy's over, not south, but west, and my guy's over on the other end of the board are kind of lollygagging just waiting to react uh yeah you hustled them over there pretty quick though yeah i set some of them up on road hexes trying to be out of line of sight so if i could react i could get a road bonus on some of them yeah this is about where you had that uh second line squad that 447 in the middle there ended up holding me up for for uh couple turns he locked me in melee and oh the guy in the woods there right yeah, yeah the guy in the woods in the in middle, v1 yeah. or whatever yeah he was Just couldn't get <laughs> he was kind of a thorn in your side there for a couple turns yeah that gave me time to yeah react and move my other squads down i was a little leery of you know there's the other victory condition up there in the upper right i was a little leery of leaving that in the open but i kept an eye on your guys and it looked like at this point you're fully committing to, head, to driving down, you know, west of the board, and my reinforcements could cover that if you did anything sneaky. Yeah, part of my original plan was, like I said, to go for the lower building, uh, but I also was trying to drive uh, south, I guess, towards the other, towards the other building a little bit, maybe uh, to cut off your reinforcements, but. The whole, you ended up, like I said, you got that one squad holding me up in the middle, and then that gave you the opportunity to get your heavy set up right behind that, which held me a little more. The middle, yeah. my middle, my head, I struggled with getting anything done in the middle. Yeah, but you have a whole wall of green coming in from the north there on the left side, which freaked me out a little bit. And my whole point was not to... You know, the whole point of, at least for me, for setting up defenses isn't necessarily incurring casualties, but to delay, right? If you can slow down the opponent as much as you can, that can usually keep them from getting victory conditions, no matter how much how many casualties you, you get on them. Well, that's kind of what happens in this scenario, or in this game. I mean, I'm, my overall plan, I think, uh, worked, you know, worked way I wanted it to but it just took too long in the end it just took too oh, long yeah the guys in V2 I got yeah that one squad is basically holding up that whole stack yeah and then I think I get a lucky shot 
on your T2 stack here shortly, and you, I break a bunch of guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think it took me uh, two player turns to get those guys all rallied. And uh, they're the guys that end up uh, taking off for the other building. Well, this is something interesting here that I didn't notice. I can't remember what happened. You move that whole stack back, and then all of a sudden they're back in T2. We must have done something wrong there. Do you remember what happened there? <laughs> you, like, I routed them back, I, and then they then they went back to T2. I th yeah, I think I wanted to route them back, and then I thought, no, I have a pretty good chance to rally them, so I think I changed my mind. And I oh, okay. So I see you're trying to make a west end run here on me. Yeah, I thought um, I thought this was going to work, but you ended up uh, moving some guys around and kind of cut me off a little bit and slowed me down. Yeah, and I have my heavy set up in L2, so I could either harass you on the east side, you guys coming down, or if you run across the L uh, hex row with your guys, I could cut them off too on the on the bottom side. Oh, yeah, that, that, that heavy, machine gun just broke, of course. <laughs> yeah, that heavy made me really nervous, and that slowed me up too. Uh, it took me, uh, you know, a couple turns to reduce that stack to the point where I could, <clears throat> could uh, move around you a bit. Yeah, and you broke my line of defense in J, so I'm backing off, and I have uh, my Uber stack there. Now, at this point, we're about halfway done, and I've left the building uh, here comes your reinforcement yeah i bring my reinforcements in and at this point my plan was i was going to leave a squad there in building uh hi yeah and i totally forgot for some reason because i thought you were pretty much committed to driving west downward on the board and you weren't going to sneak back but we'll see what happens and i was going to leave a squad there to back up and i totally forgot <laughs> Well, I was, you know, I really didn't have any intention of going for that other building, but then you break in that, uh, my kill stack, which kind of uh, left them out of the game for, left them behind, you know, a turn, turn and a half or something. And then when you totally left that other building undefended, it was like, wow, should I go for it? Yeah. Yeah, you're my talking about guy. your guys in T2? Yeah. 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 So now you're coming around the west side here on the lower end of the board. I think I get, I break a couple guys, which helped me out a lot because you're trying to make an end run. Yeah. You had uh, those two two squads in, uh, what was it, M M5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got a KIA in 01, the guy with the demo charge. You were going in for the kill. I think I got a KIA on those guys. Yeah, the two guys in M4 and M5, I fired at them a bunch. I could not break them. I thought I could get a, fire, a couple fire groups or something and break them, get them out of my way, but they actually held me up too. My my whole attack here for this lower building just kind of bogged down really about this point. So this is about the time where I was thinking, well, I might have to try and just take my kill stack and run up to the other building. Yeah, and I have my 9 minus 2. I brought them all the way back down, not leaving the squad up there. And I think this is the point where your 9 minus 1 stack, I start eyeballing yeah. them, thinking, mm, I wonder if they're going to make a run back. And sure enough, you do here. Oh, I just lost the stack in L2. Everybody but the leader is gone. Yeah. That, that hurt. And the machine guns broke. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, yeah. Yeah, that uh, strong point is completely gone for you. Yeah, I don't like those German heavies. They're... Yeah, they can be nasty. They're rate of fire three, they're pretty nasty. So I was pretty happy when you broke that. <laughs> I forget how that happened. I Did you smoke them with a really good roll, or what, did I just get a bunch of casualty reductions? I don't recall, but it hurt. Uh, I think I think you rolled like crap on your morale check, broke some guys, and then... I don't know, you must have rolled box cars. Oh, there goes the kill stack. <laughs> yeah, there you go, you run off. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, here we go. I was eyeballing them and you did it. 
So at this point, I think we're on the second to last turn here. Yeah. For my last turn. No, no. You have one more turn to get yeah, in a building. Right. So I think the building on the lower board, I've got, I think I've got it fairly secure. It's now I'm like, how do I get back to the upper, upper building? My only hope is my nine minus two stack running the back. Uh, yeah, I figured you'd be able to catch me, but I was just hoping lucky die roll. It was going to be close because uh, yeah, as far as movement factors goes, to get up there and either stop you or get in the building on my last turn. If I did, if I'd been able to go one more hack. I could have had you covered, but I didn't really have a good line of sight to you at this yeah. point. Then of course, I, in my, yeah. my yeah. next turn I tried to uh, counter exhaust everybody again, which <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> yeah, we yeah you you forgot you had been counter exhausted, even yeah. though you know the, the counter is right there. I I always don't see it too. I don't know why they're invisible to me. Uh, here I'm making just a mad dash for that lower. That lower victory building. Yeah, and I'm firing like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, this is like my last, <laughs> almost last minute. And then one thing we noticed is, I mean, I read the victory conditions on the card, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that seems pretty straightforward. And then the way they marked the victory conditions on this vassal map that we downloaded they put the V right in the middle of the buildings. They should put them on the actual, because it's not the vic the building; it's the hex within each building. Yeah, I don't think there wasn't any. We couldn't find a real definition, definitive, uh, if it was the building or or just the hex. But we figured it was just that. Yeah, I think the scenario card lists the actual hex number. It doesn't say the building, but the victory conditions they put on here, they put it in the center of the building. It's kind of misleading. They put it in the center of the building instead of the actual hex. So you came up one hex short, basically. Your guys up at the top end tried to dash into that building. Um, yeah. The leader made it in, but he didn't make it to H4. No. Which, which was technically the victory condition hex. And then the bottom side... P5 was technically the victory condition next. Even if you would have made it in, I had a huge stack up on the on the yeah. top side that I could have, you know, gotten your leader out of there. So. Yeah, because I think we we call it quits right here, but you technically you still had another player turn to go. Right. So. Right. But there, I was out of uh, I was out of turns, and then I I didn't have. Uh, like I said, I didn't have the hexes. So. Yeah, this is as far as you could go up top you were either broken or pinned and I could have gone out of your line of sight to get into that building so yeah we kind of called it here called it a German victory but all in all it, other than the well the two aspects for me were the pre-game bombardment seemed kind of pointless and then the Germans were given Panzerfaust uh, as a special scenario rule without any AFVs being involved and I think I fired one they just aren't effective because you can only fire them at, at infantry in a building and all the buildings are two hexes apart and you get there's a back back, back blast penalty so i think just getting a hit is nearly impossible or even i think even accessing a panzer Foss is nearly impossible yeah i think if i had you know if we'd been playing more up more towards the other victory building with the uh... The buildings are a lot closer. That was one one of the reasons I chose the the lower victory condition. But I think if you'd been up more action up there, you might have used the Panzer Pots more. That's true. Yeah, the buildings up it's a lot tighter up there. All, yeah. A lot of the buildings are one hex apart. So that was a good strategy by you because the Panzer Pots, if they hit, they're pretty nasty. But to access one and actually get a hit in this scenario is is pretty hard. Yeah, but I think you had 19, you know, 19 chances, and you would only need needed a uh, one or two of the to come through, and it could have been a game changer. Yeah, I think right. I like I, I think I fired one or two or tried to, and yeah, nothing. So uh, overall, I thought it was a great scenario, though. I it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, a lot of back and forth action, and 
pretty pretty balanced. Um, one thing that I noticed on board R um, is all the line of sights, and we talked about this before, all the line of sights were either barely clear or barely blocked. Uh, not all of them, but many of them. So we, yeah. we were wondering, is that by design? Did they actually design it that way and just move the building silhouette slightly to get that, or is it just coincidence but yeah there's lots of tight line of sights on that board i kind of think it's coincidence because i you know it would be a huge amount of work to, or at least i think it'd be a huge amount of work to, to do it on purpose but yeah to check everything and then yeah but yeah it was a good good board for some uh, uh city fighting or street fighting action yeah it was a lot of fun yeah so Next up, we've got Hammer to the Teeth, um, which <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah, don't, I like how you groan, because it was, the first, I would say the, it was aptly named, because the first two turns, I literally put a hammer to, hammer to your teeth, it was kind of brutal, but yeah. <laughs> you, you came back and made it interesting, so that's what we have going on uh, for the next video. All right. Okay, see you next time. And right, roll, roll low.